Good morning, ladies and gentlemen from Tucson, Arizona. Got some exciting things to share today. Exciting thing number one to share. I'm gonna attempt to get this all buttoned up. I realized I had an issue here. I don't know if this was pressing out or what, but the wood was kind of jogging out. So instead of having a nice vertical uh, support system, it was kind of bowing out a little bit. So I caught that yesterday. Um, used a variety of tools. I chiseled this out. I tried to use a multi-tool. That'll kind of be hidden by the um, piece of cedar. So you can touch that up or something. I don't know. No big deal. I'm not going to cry over spilt milk. This goes over this. I'm going to install this next. Um, that is to hide all of that nonsense. Use a couple cap cabinet screws right into the blocks to secure it. And then I'm gonna cut a new piece here and run it across and attempt to make that perfectly vertical as, or as much as I can. Also, thank you to the guys out there who have been using my Amazon store. That's been helping a little bit. Uh, Amazon does pay a very small commission. I don't know what it is, just a couple few points or something like that, percentage points. Uh, that is where I have all sorts of stuff, where I have lots of the stuff I've ordered, stuff I use, stuff I like, uh, things like, you know, a fuse block or a radio or, you know, fans that I'm installing in the back with an on-off switch. Uh, lots and lots of things. Um, doesn't cost you guys anything extra. Uh, like I said, it's just a little commission that Amazon pays. So that is always in every single video. If you just hit that down arrow, uh, it'll it'll open up, you know, more information. So yeah, check it out there. Use it, love it. And thank you guys in advance. I'm gonna try and kick butt because uh, I only have a, about a week left here in in uh, Arizona before I take off, and I'll be coming back here late May, and then try to get out of here by June. It's heating up out here, and it makes me very afraid of things. You see that? Those are flowers on a saguaro cactus. I am here way too late. You're preaching to the choir if you tell me this has been taking a long time. I already know. Um, so, I dreamt up this little idea. That's gonna go like that, but on the other side. That's a flagpole holder. So, um, I painted before welding, which I shouldn't really do, but um, anyways, that's how I did it. I did that because, well, I gotta sand this down anyways, because this was an afterthought. The garage is looking pretty good, pretty empty. I'm gonna snag one of these one by twos and uh, try and finish up the uh, wire chase right now. Also, once I get back on the road, I'm gonna have a slight variation of what I've been doing before. Um, a new fun idea, so stay tuned for that. Um, I'm not really going to give any details, but you will soon find out if I I'm still, it's still in the uh, planning phases, so uh, just a kind of new fun idea to keep things fresh and, uh, and all that for bus number two, which I still don't have a name for. So if you have any suggestions, throw them in the comments right now and I'll take a peek. All right, and there we have it, secured with two cabinet screws. It's like magic. It's done. And you know the funny part was, I uh, sanded down some of this a little bit where this cable is, this big cable is, and the majority of the problem was actually the foam, so I kind of did a bunch of work for nothing. Well, not really nothing, because that was a little bit in the way, but yeah. Just wanted to get this uh, perfectly straight so it matches up well with this, and then I'll continue on on top of there, all the way there, and this whole thing will be one giant LED on both sides, actually front to back on both sides and actually connected in the front and I know it's really hard to know what to order sometimes so all of this like I said is on my Amazon store um, link in this video um, but yeah that's where you can get the exact same stuff that I ordered from the exact same seller as you can tell it's a little hot I'm sweating um, but super handy for stuff like that. It takes out all the hours of guesswork research that I had to do and all the people that I spoke to, uh, an expert in LEDs actually set me up with that whole system. So that is yours. Uh, 
to enjoy and to purchase. All right, now moving on. I uh, installed, stained, cut, pre-drilled, tapped, and cabinet screwed my way to finishing this side. I also have this uh, little, I'm gonna call it an extension cord LED sneaking through that corner. Uh, this whole panel looks ready to go. Over here, I'm still waiting on um, something. I'm waiting on the top piece. I had a little issue yesterday, cut out that, chiseled out that, just to make it totally flush against the wall as much as possible. And then it stopped about here this morning when I recut it, I think, and before this was installed. So this is actually now gonna go all the way there on the top. The bottom part is gonna be covered with wood up to here. And I'm not sure what to do quite yet on the bottom. Um, yeah, in a perfect world, I think I would, uh, I don't know, have this go all the way there and have the wires go behind somehow. I'm not, I'm not sure. I might fiddle with that right now and see if I can come up with a solution. I mentioned earlier in this video what was slowing me down was the couch cushions <laughs> well they called me and they said hey your cushions are done um, and the cushions are done so this is the color this is a copper brown um, it is a marine grade uh, vinyl um, I have the bottom cushion for this other side but uh, there's a little mix-up and so they made actually two bottom pieces um, this is 25 and this is 12 so I have two 25s, <laughs> not a 25 and a 12. But anyways, it should look like this. I'll get the whole rest of the stuff done this week, this part put up. I'll make it look nice and, you know, showable. Like I said, we'll get all these things covered up here. But yeah, quickly coming together. Uh, Glenn and I did the, I don't even know what to call this, wire chase I'm calling it. Uh, it's going to have LEDs behind it. Um, so this was nice and vertical here, but I noticed that um, it wasn't as wide. You see, my finger can barely fit in there, and, and then, you know, yeah. So, anyways, it's because this wood was further away, and I didn't. Yeah. So, anyways, just forget that. <laughs> it shouldn't. It's not going to make a big difference. Indirect lighting, anyways. Uh, just going to be a little bit difficult to slide the LEDs through. And then over here, we'll pick this up. I'll have to touch this up also. I wasn't super... Uh, I wasn't paying attention to the wood that was on the bottom side. But anyways, I'll make a piece of wood the same height, continue it over to this LED uh, extension cord, I'm calling it, which goes over to the other side. And then this will have ind indirect lighting also. So both sides will have LEDs from front to back. The power source is there, goes to a little extension cord here and then ends right there so anyways um, let's pick up tomorrow and uh, tomorrow I'm gonna probably paint this touch up some spots and maybe install the two fans there and uh, some other stuff on the inside okay picking up where I left off the day or day before uh, I think it was yesterday I put in the fuel level Okay, I finally brought over the armrests. This looks complete. Uh, so, for the couple people who cringed at the sight of exposed wires, uh, that piece is right there. That has nothing to do with the wires, but all the wires are hidden. So, can I get a thumbs up for that, please? You know how long this has been exposed. <laughs> I feel like we're making major strides here in this uh, bus build, and to be quite honest, I'm very happy. It looks very, very polished and it looks like a extremely high quality build, which makes me happy uh, because people will appreciate all the work that's gone into this. Now, I have the armrest over here today. Still got to clean up the bottom part, which uh, has some 
I don't know, teardrops on it. But this is what the cushion is going to look like. I pulled the bottom of the cushion out a little bit to uh, mimic a slant. Uh, I could create a slant with like a pool noodle or something, just kind of bump that out just so it's maybe a, a bit more comfortable. Maybe, I don't know. These are called bolsters. I just learned that the other day. But otherwise, I am extremely happy with how this looks. And obviously we have some sun and some shade, so it's a little hard to... Here we go. I feel like that's a pretty good color match right there. Um, we went with trying to match the lighter colors instead of the dark because there's very few dark uh, colors in here and there's a lot of, of lighter colors. Um, light, well compared to like dark dark, right? This is a lighter color, this is mostly a lighter color. This is where it mixes more so than anywhere else but it was either this or like a really dark chocolate brown and I felt like this was I don't know, I went with this, not to explain myself. The other option I was thinking of was red to match the outside of the bus, but nothing else in here screams look at me besides a high quality craftsmanship of uh, Wander Boom and Reed and Mojo Bus and everyone else that's helped me on this. Um, Ronnie with the floors, uh, on and on and on, Steve with the benches, and anyways, you get the idea. But yeah, so this is a color I end up going with. In a perfect world, I would love to match the driver's seat, uh, but I don't have a driver's seat yet. This one is damaged, so as fun as it is to drive, it does have a swivel seat, but it just wiggles like crazy and makes me feel like I'm gonna tip over the bus when really it's just my chair. Go figure. All right, I went ahead and uh, cut open the hole larger I figured it would be easier to drop this in than uh, try and move an 800 pound tank or try to uh, move all the fuel again. It takes a long time, hours. This took me 20 minutes max. So anyways, um, I have an 18 inch tank. Uh, from the bottom side here down to there, it's about 17, 17 and an eighth. Um, they say you leave it off the bottom about an inch. I have somewhere between three quarters and seven eighths. And uh, if you can see the diagram here, coolant goes in, coolant goes out, and uh, heats the tank, and also is an inline heater for the fuel. Uh, in this case, it's going to be vegetable oil or diesel if I decide to put it in there. Um, so the orientation is going to be like that. I may swap this fuel. Uh, elbow around to here and have everything kind of grouped up together. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and install. It's, uh, relatively simple. Um, I have a push fittings hose barb um, which connect into there. I'll show you later. They're pretty simple. Um, I don't know where they are currently, but here they are. So those are not removable from the hose itself. You don't need a hose clamp. You push them on once, that's it. They swivel at the bottom so I can tighten them on the threads here. All right. This is, <laughs> this is my hot fox. This is installed. I went ahead and um, these are all new hoses. Um, I thought it would be easier to um, wrench them in with access. So I decide these are very hard to push on, by the way. So, yeah, went ahead, pushed the hoses on, screwed them in. Um, with these uh, fuel sending units, there's only one direction that um, the screws go into, which doesn't matter when you have um, some big gaping holes like this, but it does matter for the gasket, which is under it. So. If it doesn't work in all five positions like this, you need to flip it over. Um, that's what I've learned from these projects. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So this is what this is what it looks like. I did end up leaving this screw on top, even though the strap will need to uh, go on here rather closely to everything. Um, I don't, I don't know how that's going to work, but we'll sort that out. 
the main thing is it's installed finally I'm very excited for that and uh, I don't know if I'm gonna continue on with the hoses it's a little late in the day and I'm pretty tired and the camera's on 1% I will be making some slight upgrades to my uh, uh, camera equipment I'm gonna get a um, microphone so if anybody out there has complained about audio quality in the past uh, hopefully this will fix it it will be a slight inconvenience to me because it will make my, my, make my camera twice as tall um, I have been doing the stealth thing uh, up until now but I feel like you know there's a few things I want to work on going forward and one of them is the audio quality along with the video quality and of course the story and the videos uh, I really want to make these a lot higher quality um, and that might mean a little bit less videos, which is okay with me. Um, but, um, you know, I really, I don't know. I just want to make something super high quality so when people watch it, it looks like it's a TV show or something, kind of. I don't know if I can even pull that off. Also, quick update. Uh, Alaska, I'm trying to leave no later than July 1st to cross the border to drive up there. If anybody, if anyone wants to caravan, you're welcome to, but I don't yet have a solid concrete plan. So for those people who are going up anyways, that's my kind of rough uh, date. Um, I am trying to make it to the bus fair in Oak Ridge, or Oregon, um, the weekend of June, I think it's seventh and eighth, um, on Instagram, the bus fair. Uh, for more information. Okay, boys and girls, I'll give you a uh, brief overview. These two lines come out uh, two of three. Fuel, hot water, hot water right over there by that other tank. Uh, I took off one that looped into this, and then it, uh, that, that actually on the far side looped down and went here. It's coming directly out of the diesel coolant, diesel power coolant heater. So instead of looping directly here, I'm looping it to the tank first and then back here. And then I took off the fuel, plugged it on the other side of this, and uh, ran a new line from the top sucker to the inlet. Now, I did drain this here into this bucket, uh, got a little water on the uh, ground. That's all the oil that spilled. Less than a cup. Did a pretty good job this time. Uh, crimped off this line. Cut off the fitting. Reused the fitting for that one. Have an extra fitting. So, here's the moral of the story. The moral. The moral of the story. I forget. Oh! When I drained the oil, there was red coolant mixing with my oil yet again and water coolant uh, gets blocked by the fuel filter I'm using it as an oil filter veggie oil filter in this heated Davco filter this is a second one to be leaking but this since I had two of them we rebuilt this one badge and I so I don't know what the problem is I do have another one so I'm thinking thinking I'm thinking Ow, that hurts when I think. <laughs> I am thinking, this is it right here. This is the original one. I'm thinking to rebuild this one again. Maybe use high temp O-rings? I'm not really sure. I don't know. All I know is that if you have an old semi-truck and you have a Davco and you're having engine problems, filter problems, it's probably the Davco. At some point, that issue will arise. <sighs> Alright, moving right along. Good news, bad news. Good news is, everything's hooked up. <clears throat> the bad news, like I think I mentioned, there was coolant coming out of the filter. Let me walk you through my thought, thought process. I called Kyle Volkman, my veggie guru, who also was taught by nategun22 at gmail.com for everybody who says, who's your guy, whatever. This is a coolant heated system. It's leaking coolant into the oil. Water coolant 
is the worst thing possible for a diesel engine, uh, along with the particulates. All right, so I'm gonna get a Raycor. Here's why. More surface area. More surface area means less filters to, to replace. They're about the same cost as the ones I use, about 12 bucks, 11 bucks. Um, and two, the one that I'm thinking about getting is electric heated. And apparently I only need to heat it uh, just on startup for a few minutes. Um, and then it should be hot enough to flow through the whole system because of that heated pickup hot fox thing, uh, which is heated from coolant. So I need to order something because I've now failed three times at this. I've used a half dozen filters, and Kyle Volkman says that I should be only replacing filters every 2,000 miles. I've replaced these every 50 or so except for the first time I used it. Got a couple hundred out of it. <sighs> so that's the update on the veggie oil. For those wondering, um, I have some more to put in here. I haven't really been playing with the oil that much. Um, I'm just gonna check for leaks on the Hot Fox unit. Actually, let's go inside and check for leaks together. All right, so for those wondering, I'm running a, uh, was, well, currently I'm hooked up running a Davco 382, and that's what was leaking. <laughs> Now, nothing, no water coming out, that's one, no water coming out on the number two. Holy crap, this whole unit is hot to the touch, probably 150 degrees, maybe 120, it's, it's hotter than my, way hotter than my body temperature, and these fittings here, especially this one over here, this must be where it comes in, this one here is... If it was any hotter, it would burn. Uh, so, it's hot. It's working. Just like the name, Hot Fox. It is heating the tank. I had it on for about 20 minutes. So, I'm now just gonna touch the tank just to see if there's any noticeable difference. None at all. Seems to be about the same temperature. Um, you know, about 70 degrees or so, it's in the shade. Takes a long time to heat up after overnight, all that stuff. So, from here on out, I'm gonna work on the inside of the bus. I'm gonna try and put the floors back in, maybe tomorrow, work on the subfloors, uh, and then address this system after. What I'll do is I'll just bypass this uh, heated filter. I'll just connect this hose to this hose here, and uh, I'll just replace that with a Raycor.